What's our favorite generation and the games thereof for Pokemon? Welcome everyone, this is Systematic Ecology. We are the priest of the geeks as we continue on through, uh, this is a new series itself. Uh, maybe we'll do more, but uh, today we're gonna to be discussing our favorite Pokemon games, generations, everything within those. Uh, and by we, I mean, of course, myself, Christian Ashley, and Elizabeth Pangalang and Clyde, the co-leader of the rebellion against the evils of Joshua Noel and everything that he represents. How's it going, Pang? Pretty good. Hello. I'm ready to catch them all, Christian. I'm just you're ready. Get, you, okay. You're getting more like TJ with your answers as time goes on. But we're not alone today. That other laugh that you hear is a guest for us. Uh, Laura Whitman, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Whitman. Um, I am a United Methodist pastor in the North Carolina Conference of the Methodist Church. Um, I serve as the chaplain of Lewisburg College, um, which is a small two-year school. Um, and I also serve as the coordinating pastor of Lighthouse Congregations um, for our conference. I also am a Pokemon master as well. I, yes, <laughs> of course. We, I think we're all mutual Pokemon masters here with all we've done. But other than Pokemon itself, is there anything else you're super interested in geek wise that the people need to know about? I'm into a lot of things. Um, Star Wars, like so much so that we named one of our kids after Star Wars characters. Um, really into Duke basketball as a geek thing in itself. Um, and I'm really into, I can't really explain this one, but Bluey. I love Bluey. Like I can't get enough Bluey. So you we know, did a Bluey cool. episode. I love it. Yeah, I've got Bluey and Bingo up here we did not, as well. Uh, was it last year? Yeah. Perfect. So so like we mentioned, we are doing a Pokemon episode. We're focusing primarily on the video games themselves, uh, but we'll go into a little bit of the card game later on. What has everyone been geeking out on recently? Um, and I for can go me, first and get people on the thing. Oh, go ahead. Me? Oh, so lately I have not had as much time to play it as I want to, but I've been playing Echoes of Wisdom and I have loved it so far. So um, all the Zelda love. More Yu-Gi-Oh. Perfect. Don't know why. We're Thanks. just really into the original 90s Yu-Gi-Oh for me. All right. You're getting closer to the end now, though, right? Yes, I am almost um, gonna move done because I can't remember. I don't know. I don't think they're connected if I remember correctly. Like they are vaguely. Oh, they are. I don't know. I have to. I have, they are. OK. It's like the new new ones yep. that are kind of just crazy. We'll see. I don't Perfect. know. Wherever the wherever the anime leads me, I will follow. Fair. There you go. <laughs> uh, me, I've watched the first couple episodes of The Legend of Vox Machina, which is the third season for that. Really enjoyed it. It was a really fun time. But yeah, so now is the time when we actually go into the episode proper and discuss Pokemon. So, ladies, when did you get introduced to Pokemon? It was Christmas Eve in the 90s when I was at my grandmother's house and we were unwrapping gifts, very cheerful. And there I unwrapped a Game Boy yellow and with it, Pokemon yellow. And hence my favorite color was born from that moment on. And ever since then, I've been diehard Pikachu fan. It is tattooed <laughs> on my body. It is displayed around my house. It is in my soul, Pokemon. There you go. So I love that. Wow. Thank you. For me, okay. it was uh, 1997. Very emo take. Uh, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was what? definitely Indigo League, 1997. I was maybe too old to be into Pokemon, but who cares about societal standards? Um, I was really into it immediately. <laughs> I had all of the Pokemon like on my backpack, like on keychains. Like I would carry Pokemon around with me at school. Um, this was middle school for me, high school like age. But Indigo League, I was immediately obsessed with. So that was my first introduction. Um, I also have the Game Boy with me with the yellow, the Pokemon Go. I need to go get it at my desk so i can show it perfect me i was let's see this would have been yeah me this would have been around third grade i think 97 98 i don't trust me for timelines and you know heard about you know the anime that was coming out the video games didn't know what anime was at that age and had a lot of friends who were into it and there was also the time when you know People were afraid of things they didn't understand. 
And so there was a huge, big, nope, it's Japanese, it's satanic, we can't go anywhere near it until eventually my parents, you know, cooled down on that. I actually got in trouble one night for borrowing a friend's uh, Game Boy to play the game and hiding under my covers to play it. And my mom found me. So that was not a good day. But she did chill out later on. So I got into, you know, the next generation, Gen 2 and so on and so forth. Uh, watched a little bit of the anime. I definitely dropped out of watching that and had a couple of the Pokemon cards that also I had to hide from my mother. And yeah, I, I, it's been a really fun series to get into. So uh, speaking of, like, what is it about the series that we love? Pikachu. Also Pikachu. Yes. Solid and answer. Pika. To be fair, more Pico is my spirit animal at the same time because more Pico's very existence is about being hangry, right? So when he's hangry, yes. he's angry, you know, more Pico. And then he goes back to being nice, and that's me in real life. So relatable. Yeah, I'll say, uh, listeners, uh, uh, just on the podcast, you are missing out on some great visuals today. Well, holding our Pikachus, and I'm yes. wearing my Pokemon hat. And your Pika clones. Yeah. <laughs> I have, in just in this room alone, one, two, in this room alone, I have five stuffed Pikachus with me, not including the other Pokemon plushies. Wow. Just saying. It, me, this kind of, this kind of tickles my fancy of like going out, exploring a world, finding new friends to make, uh, if new Pokemon to make friends with and learning about type advantages and like uh, not being that eight, nine-year-old kid who said, well, I'll just use Charizard against everything because Charizard's the best. It's like, no, you actually have to learn some strategy and you know, the physical special split and everything. I like to get into the competitive side of things, but really I just like exploring and just having fun in these games. Man, I spent some hours playing that game, boy. How was? <laughs> and even like into adulthood, like because I would just have random, even now, random moments. I'm like, you know what? Let's go and just replay it. Oh, yeah. I learned because of this game how to replace a battery in a Game Boy cartridge and how to clean a Game Boy cartridge appropriately. So new hobbies were born and new um, tools that have helped me later in life. So life skills. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I also remember all the arguments of after my parents had cooled down and let me play and actually own the games uh, of being in the car and having the little what did I, what do they call those lights that you would stick to the side of yeah. the Game Boy and being like, you can't have that on. I can't see. Turn it off. It's like every dad in the world is their job to say if there's a single light inside the car, the car will flip over and run off the road. It's very dangerous. Right. But gosh, that Game Boy Advance, though, like, no, no, yeah. not the Game Boy, you know, the flip one. The Game Boy Advance <laughs> was the longer one. That's the one that came out. But the flip one with the backlight, lifesaver. Like, yeah. I'm so, so thankful. And then you go to the Nintendos, like DSs and DS, like, it's just, it got better. And now you have the Switch. It's like, mm -hmm. it just keeps getting better. Got that too. Better and better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember so, when the 3DS came out, I got the one that was made specifically for X and Y. And I love that sucker. Well, we're going to be talking about our favorite generations and games. We're just going to do our top three just for the sake of time. But are there any games that we haven't played? Because you know, Pokemon has many different things besides like their base games. You know, you've got the Let's Go series. You've got the Ranger series, uh, the Shadows of Darkness and all that. Like, are there any you guys haven't played? Yeah, there's a gap for me, like between like the like I didn't play X and Y. I didn't play um, after Ruby. There was a gap until it started getting released on the on the Switch. I would say same for me, actually. I played like the OG, OG games and then all of the DS and Switch games. But there were some of the advanced games I didn't play until later. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I stopped after Gen 2. So Gold, Silver, Crystal. And it's kind of one of the things. So I've outgrown such things. I don't need to get back into it. And then in college, when you relearn to love things that you loved as a kid, I had a good friend of mine, a mutual friend of the show, Matthew Bailey, who introduced me to gen three four and five and so i played those so he gifted me his for a little bit uh so that i could play those games that's when i caught my first shiny that wasn't the shiny gyarados a little yeah it was a ton of fun but as far as the mainstream games i played them all even the remakes but other than that i have never played like ranger or conquest or the 
50 billion other things that are out there. But yeah, I, there's something that's always bringing me back to Pokemon. It just feels good to get back into it at times. Like you need that de-stressor. Mm -hmm. Did All you right. play Pokemon um, Capture, like the picture taking game on the Switch? That was pretty... the snap. Yeah, the no, snap. that's not really my thing, but I understand why people love it. It was very fun. I did like it. I did like it. And I got like the Fujifilm, like Pikachu, you know, that you could print off the pictures and stuff too. It's pretty fun. Nice. Okay. So we're going to switch on to actually discussing our favorite gens, uh, starting with our third. And anyone can go first. And what we're going to do is we're going to say which gen is our favorite, you know, why we like the games more than others, how many times have we played them, our favorite mon from that gen, our favorite gem battle, and then what don't we like about them. So who would like to go first for their number three? Mm. And I can't if you need time. Mm, I think my third favorite would probably be maybe Gen 2, Pokemon Johto. Okay. That's that's with Cyndaquil, right? Yep. And Chikorita and um, Totodile, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's my third favorite, just because, you know, you're still in the hype. Okay, the and newest Chikorita games to come out. <laughs> yeah, her, like, her little crush on Ash in the anime was just cute, too. All right. So that's why you like it. Like, how many times have you played Gen 2 games? Um, That was the... What color games are those again? I know Gold, them better by crystal. color. Yeah, okay. Crystal that played the mess out of some crystal. Uh probably played that like almost yeah the most. But I don't know why. I just kept on going back to like those that Safari game. Like whenever you got to like just chill out in the Safari, and I think you can get it into the, the other ones too. And then I think Crystal has the tower and I could never defeat the whole tower and it really made me mad. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite mon from that gen? Is it Chikorita? Mm. I, I want to say Chikorita for the personality, but I think Cyndaquil is cuter. That's fair. But Chikorita's personality is pretty much me whenever I see my husband, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and the Pokemon. Taylor slander continues. Uh, that is no compliment. That's not a slander. <laughs> yeah, the, the weakest starter. That's our boy Taylor. That's what Pang thinks of him. No, I'm saying I'm Chikorita having a crush on my husband. Oh, okay, Ash. okay. I misunderstood. All right. Duh. I will retract what I've said. As you should. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a loving freaking wife. Uh, there's a first for everything. Yeah, you're right. Do you have a favorite gym battle you remember from Gen 2? Nope, sure don't. Nah, I figured as much. Uh, is there anything you don't like about uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal? Yeah, one time in the silver game, I freaking saved. It was in the ice palace, and I saved the wrong boulder sequence. Uh, and once you saved it, I hated myself. And you were stuck. Trauma, man. <laughs> I was stuck. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I ever did, like, day. get out. <laughs> that was just, like, that was just the worst. I tried so hard to get around it, and I think I ended up just restarting it. Yeah. Because back in that uh, day, you didn't have walkthroughs. You didn't have the internet. You can just Google stuff. You had to buy it. Like, yeah. And so, and my parents didn't buy me that big old book of walkthrough. So We were lucky to get the games. Yeah. Those times are tough back then. <laughs> the 90s. The early 90s. 2000s. That you'd like to now add about Generation 2? Okay. Laura, how about I'm you? Out. Um, so I think um, my third would be... Um, Sword and Shield. Which generation is okay. that? Is that eight? Eight, yeah. So um, I loved Score Bunny, like Aww. big Score Bunny fan. Um, and but I couldn't tell you what my favorite gym was. I remember getting irrationally mad um, at the Water Gym and then realizing I had just picked all the wrong Pokemon. You would think someone who had played it forever would know how to not do that, but I went in real confident and just really frustrated and that was at the time that I realized my kids were better at games than I was now because mm. they came in and told me what to do and it was just a real turning point for me in um in my life <laughs> so <laughs> mixed real, mixed feelings. real humbling yeah. experience yes yeah for sure yeah all right uh how many times have you played it sword and shield I've played too many times um probably <laughs> 
I got stuck on that for a long while because I revisited it again during like the pandemic and all of that. Like it was, you know, it was a replay. So, yeah. Is there anything you don't particularly like about Gen 8? Um, not really. I mean, I really liked the, um, well, cause I'm a card game fan too. So I really like the cards that came out with that generation, especially like, so mm. there were some good cards to accompany it. Okay. Now, if you're on YouTube, you can see my choice. It is, of course, Gen 6. And not because I think it's the best generation in that regard for the third pick, but because of what it means to me, it got me back into Pokemon. It was around that time. That's when I bought that Switch. And I just needed it back in my life again. You know, like I said, I had played the other gens before that, but you know, it was nice. But Gen 6 is like introducing Mega Evolution and all these different new Pokemon. And it just felt so good to be part of that oh everyone's discovering it at the same time like it was back all the way back in elementary school it'd be like yeah there's there's totally a mew underneath that that truck over there you just got to use these specific things to get to it only to find out later there is a specific way to get mew like 20 years after the fact and it, it just felt good to be part of that again now how many times have i played through it at least at least nine or ten uh one of those things just I would always transfer my mons to Y and then back to X so that I could replay each one and not lose anything that I'd caught. Favorite mon, uh, weird pick, but I'm going to pick Dr Dragalgy, uh, our poison dragon. I love its design. I love the fact that at the time that was a very unique typing for it. And it went from that, you know, standard, you know, water poison to a poison dragon. It's like, yes, sign me up. That was so cool. Favorite gym battle would definitely be. Uh, what was her name? Karina. I think your third gym battle for that one, where you you've just been introduced to Mega Evolution, and now you get to use it on a gym leader for the first time. It just felt so good to do that. What I don't like about it, uh, the middle part gets a little long, not nearly as long as Gen Seven will, but it just kind of meanders for a bit. So there's that. All right, our number two pick. Who wants to go, or we want to maintain order? Well, okay, we'll maintain order. Um, my number two pick would be Ruby. I don't know what gin okay. that is. Three. What gin is that? Oh, well, I'm really basic then. Um, is it well because I love the introduction to the Pokemon contests. I was all okay. up in those Pokemon contests. So yeah, well, I suppose I someone has to be a fan of them. Um, <laughs> as you should. I loved it. I'm pretty sure. I don't even know. Like I think I did defeat the whole game, but like I was sold on my contest like my beauty of blaziken Mwah. perfect and so of course i choose torchic as your favorite yeah okay he was cute yeah he was so how many times do you remember playing it count i can't count that's fair like, how many times do you remember doing stuff as a kid it's like it what do you mean? over and over it's in like oh no, yeah, 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 yeah i mean like yeah the generally mm. okay that was, do you remember a favorite some, gym i battle? had a traumatic no, I told you it's a Pokemon contestant, Christian. Why aren't you listening to me? Well, yes, <laughs> but you had to progress through the game by playing. Yeah, but I told you I champion. literally got stuck at the Pokemon contestants. Like the well, contest, yeah, beauty stuff. You know what? I love you. <laughs> we're not even going to go further. Yeah, we're done now. All right. What was the first, your most memorable contest you went through? Can't remember. Okay. Oh remember that I'm. I okay. I'm just gonna say I had a traumatic childhood. I can't remember a lot. Okay, so yes. back off. I know. Part I'll of tell it, you what I feel comfortable me. sharing. How about that? <laughs> I just wanted to tease a little bit. I know. All right. Is there anything you don't like about Gen Three? Well, yeah, I lost my Ruby game, and I was very sad. That is absolutely traumatic. It was traumatic, but yeah, is it? Okay, uh, Laura. How about you for your number two pick? My number two would be diamond and pearl which is oh just, that's a good one too i love good diamond and pearl. pearl and i loved when we got to revisit diamond and pearl um piplup was i mean you know <laughs> he's just cute um i was also irrationally excited about metapod for some reason can't explain that other than you know <laughs> who doesn't get excited about a metapod right <laughs> I mean, I'll never forget that episode of the anime where it's just Ash and that bug catcher, their metapod yeah. spoke using the hardened move, and that's the end of the episode. It's like they can't win. Yeah. Yeah. Metapod How can they? We don't know. We never saw the ending of that. 
Metapod is an underrated Pokemon, is all I'm saying. Okay, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. That's my hot Do you take. Remember how many... <laughs> you know what? That's the softest hot take of the night. I'll take it. <laughs> Hello, friends. If you enjoy Systematic Ecology, a great way to support us and to keep us moving forward into the future is to be a patron on our Patreon network. If you're a Patreon, then you get live access to our YouTube exclusives like comic book ketchup and manga mustard, drinks with Tejas, and also uh, some extra content there with our companion series to go along with our annual theme. If you're a patron, you get exclusive merch like t-shirts and handbags and mugs. There's also a bonus extra question that has extra content. In each episode, we go deeper into our faith and the questions that we're wrestling with, but we also do this extra question uh, to jump in and to share about, and and uh, patrons get to hear how we answer that question. There's discounts on our store. You get access to any future online D&D campaigns. You can easily access all of our Patreon content through our Spotify page, where it says exclusive content for subscribers. That could be you folks. And all that being said, you get the satisfaction that you help us uh, keep the lights on and keep us moving forward with, with our software, our marketing, our equipment, staying current in the podcast game. Uh, we love Systematic Ecology. We hope you do too. Support us moving forward. Thank you for all that you are. We know there's a lot of great choices and content out there, and you choose to listen to Systematic Ecology. Thanks, folks. We love you. Peace. Do you remember how many times you played through Gen 4? Oh, a lot. I don't remember how many times, though. Um, I definitely, the earlier generations, I played a lot more on repeat than the more recent generations I have. Just mm-hmm. because, you know, that was pre-kids and I had more time. Ah. You know. And less distractions, too. There's so much, like, the internet made anime so much more to watch, gaming so much more to watch. Sure. We really didn't have anything much other than our early 2000 game boys mm-hmm. like we had to do something during commercials that's true <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember having a favorite gym battle from gen 4 Mm-mm. okay fair enough mm-hmm. is there anything about the game you're not particularly fond of um i don't think so i mean i really i liked them because they were diamond and pearl and i'm you know, a sucker for good marketing and anything that's relatable. So diamonds and pearls, you know, (laughs) being the extra person that I was. (laughs) Oh yeah. Okay. Now for me, Gen 2, as you can see on YouTube is once is Gen 2, uh, my favorite, uh, second favorite, I should say, I played the heck out of this. I, I loved my Gen 1. But Gen 2 just improved on the original, and there was that whole thing. It's like, well, I just won the game, didn't I? No. Kanto is there as well. You get to refight the gym leaders. You get to refight the Elite Four again, and then you get to refight yourself. You actually get to fight yourself, I should say, from the last game. As a kid, that blew my mind. That I'm not that gonna lie. I kind of hated that because oh I, I wanted to be done. And I was like, I got to do more work. <laughs> I was kind of frustrated as I already played this game, but I still did Only it. You. Only you. <laughs> it's gonna be, it kind of aggravated me, me personally. Yeah, I, I loved all the new mods that were introduced. I love the idea of shiny Pokemon. I didn't find anything other than like the Gyarados. You know, that's like your, here's these things exist. Hope you find the, uh, hope you find more. And I was a dumb kid who didn't recognize what was going on. So I have a vague memory of like seeing maybe a Sentra that might have been shiny that I might have killed. It, I don't know if that's just a false memory I've implanted. So there's that. Now, how many times have I played them? Oh, gosh. Uh, including ROMs. Uh, it'd be at least 17, 18 times, if I'm remembering correctly. I, I feel I like if you can count them, games. it's not enough. <laughs> Keep going. Believe yeah. yourself. Okay. I can make up other <laughs> numbers. better, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then favorite Mon, I love Tyranitar so much. It has that rock dark typing that made it just so unique because I was expecting, oh, great, another rock ground type. Then it evolves. 
into that rock dark. It's like, okay, it's based on Godzilla. What is there not to love as a kid uh, who loves Godzilla? And now there's a Pokemon pretty much that looks like it, you know, with the serial numbers filed off so they don't get sued. Mm -hmm. Now, gym battle. I have a love-hate relationship with Morty's gym, and it's because of Chikorita and because (gasps) I was a dumb kid. Because me, not uh, my fat fingers remove the only non normal move that uh my bailey sorry my meganium had so i could do no damage against oh, any no. of its ghosts so i was very upset and i couldn't possibly be upset at myself because then i'd be in the wrong so it's definitely the game's fault that happens definitely meganium's of fault course. so uh, i uh had to make some peace later on that no i was just an idiot <laughs> So that so it's fun going back there and like getting my revenge. Be like, oh, you won that time, buddy. Not anymore. <laughs> Comes, I'm a very petty man. <laughs> Vengeance. Yes. Uh, Gen two. What I wasn't. Yeah, wasn't very big on the grinding. Is one of the worst in the series. Like, like you can beat the elite four and like level forty something or something like that the first time around, and then. The game escalates from there, but the mons don't just give enough experience. As a as an adult who doesn't have time for that, that's why I play ROM hacks that make it so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Mm-hmm. All right. Now it's time for our number one. Pang, the people have been waiting to hear the wisdom you're about to bestow on them. What your favorite game is, or your favorite gen out of all these gens, which one is it? It was Christmas Eve in 1990 where I was at my grandparents' house and I opened up a yellow Game Boy and there was the yellow Pokemon. You can't, if I, if I did anything but say yellow for the 15th time, like I would be betraying everything of who I am of my whole okay. being. Yeah, yeah. It will always be number one in my heart. And nostalgia factor is a huge reason for why you pick what you pick. I get it. Yeah, that's, that's why, why I'm like literally... My top three is just the top three in order, or the first three in different order. Okay. Do you have any idea in your traumatic background of how many times you played the game? Not enough. Not enough. Oh, you know, that is an excellent answer. I accept Thank it. You. So you want to be a master? I, I hesitate to ask this question. I can only imagine Oops. which mon you would choose. But <laughs> do you have a favorite from this generation? Jigglypuff. <laughs> Is my second because Pikachu is my first. Of course. <laughs> like what I did there. Nothing, nothing ever would have given that away, especially if you're watching this on YouTube right now. She's collected all her badges. Generation one. defeated it. Your favorite. Now, oh, you defeated Oh, you defeated I it. Defeated so that means them. you must have a favorite gym battle. I was so pissed with Brock's gym, honestly. Like, because with Pikachu and like, of course you get your Pidgey. You know what I mean? You get yep, a Caterpie. Yep. Like... It's just it's just made hard. It's made to be hard. That gym well, that's battle. why they in- introduced Mankey and Nidoran. So you get those double kicks and karate chops in. Yeah, I mean, once again, I didn't have the walkthrough. Be trying to like fight Brock with Thundershock over here. Stupid. <laughs> and it doesn't work like the anime where it sets off the sprinklers. It's not yeah, fair. Silly little Liz. Um, <laughs> it's fine. So probably favorite gym battle. Let's see. I like the um the the bug one, the ninja one, the heart one. Oh, Koga. Yeah, that one. That's a great one. Great pick. Yeah. Right. Is there any, now? I know it's your number one, but if you're te- if you're TJ, you believe everything has flaws, and I'm close to TJ's position. Do you think? Is there anything about that game that you don't particularly like? I just don't understand in all the games why when they do the sound of the Pokemons, why they sound like, you know what I mean? I just don't get, I never understood that. The limitations of gaming at the time. Yeah, I still don't get it. The fact that we actually got the Pika was astounding at the time because that's like the only voice acting we got. When you tell that to seven-year-old Liz, we don't care about that. Oh, poor seven-year-old Liz. I know she really did struggle, and she was ugly too. She had bug teeth and everything, but who we better now? <laughs> we really glowed up. Be nice, 
<laughs> I'm just I'm calling it as it is. Got braces. Learn how to dress myself. Quit, quit bullying yourself. <laughs> Laura, how could you possibly go on from there? But it, it's your turn. Your number one pick, generation wise. My number one pick of all the Pokemon games is Pokemon Sleep. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it is also obviously Gen One and Yellow. Like, there. What else do you? What else do you do? You know, it's. Yeah. Um, I remember being really excited about Misty's Gym just because I loved Indigo League too, and I felt like I was playing like Indigo League. You know, and yeah. Um, so it was. I mean, you were, but, um, but I just I loved it. The only flaw was the battery life of the Game Boy and driving down mm. the road and not being able to see um, and losing battery after like two hours. And my dad telling me that that was the only batteries I had for the whole trip to Pittsburgh. And um, life was a struggle for Laura at moments too growing mm -hmm. up. It, it was really tough in those These early days. They'll never know. They'll never yeah, know. Batteries, they really won't. They can plug their. Life. They get Wi-Fi in cars now. Yeah. What the heck? What the freaking heck? This spoiled generation. <laughs> How dare they be in better times? So entitled. With their That's one of the reasons why I haven't reproduced because I don't want to. I'm just pre mad at all the stuff they get. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anything else you'd like to add, Laura? Oh, uh, yeah. No. You are definitely off your meds. Nothing wrong with them. Okay, in the first one, place. I don't take meds. Yeah. <laughs> get it right. <laughs> this is all natural. I do. I feel like I should add that I have, you know, my starter Pokemon yes, right here. I also have a Pikachu and I have a Charmander, but I can't show that to you because of the outfit I wore. It was a poor mm. choice today. I was hoping you would say it was a tramp stamp or something. Oh, I yeah. I got Pikachu like right here on the small of my back. He's like, yeah, my favorite that's how hardcore I am. <laughs> God damn him all. Poor Chris. This is why we need more females. This is so fun. You know what? I'm enjoying this. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was not prepared <laughs> for the madness. <sighs> okay, I'm back. I'm composed. My number one, if you're on YouTube, you can see is Gen 5. This is another one of those. I think this is the tightest story we've had in the games overall. I love Team Plasma and in and gets us as your antagonists. Uh, I love Professor Juniper as your leader here. I think she's effective in that regard. And the whole thing that it's a flaw and something I like is that you're restricted, at least in black and white, to only the new generation. So that forced you to learn them. It forced you to not pick your old favorites and then figure out what they're about. So that, that's a bit of a criticism I would throw at it, but at the same time, I understand. So I got used to it and I liked it. So yeah, it gave me a higher appreciation for some of these mods I never would have used before. Um, one of which my favorite is my boy Crocodile. Catching him in the desert, let's see it, gr ground dark, growing up into this crocodile with dark black uh sunglasses and being a menace i love that man he carried almost every single one of my teams now uh gym battles is kind of a tie for me i think i give the slight edge to skyla because i love her gym design i love her design i love the fight you have with her but also i'd want to throw ellis out there as kind of like my backup pick because i also loved her gym design her design and her team but i think skyla just slightly edges her out in my opinion mm -hmm. Now, other than that, yeah, I've already mentioned that. So those are our favorites, our top three. If you guys in the comments below want to tell us your top three, we'd love to hear it, engage with you there. But let's go on. We're talking more about the games in general. Have we ever caught them all in no. any of the games that we played? No. I, I knew that would the be the answer. Span for that. No, definitely not. By the time I would have gotten to that point, there was a new game, and I just went to the new game. So. Yep. <laughs> yes. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I had and plus friends. Ash never caught them all, so I'm just trying to be like Ash. You know what That's I mean? That's true. To do the most. That's fair. Oh, That's yeah, fair. Yeah. Oh, the, the guy didn't become a champion until like 20 years. I, later. I need his skincare routine. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, older games most definitely never caught them all. I was hindered by the fact that sometimes I'd only be able to play one of them, depending on how much money my parents had and they were willing to throw my way. 
others was, yeah, I had friends who played, but none of us had link cables, which is mm. these dang kids don't have to worry about today either. Yeah. The fancy internet. internet. Golly. <laughs> but they don't even know what a LAN party is, right? Like, what the heck? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We, what we're saying is get off our lawns you are ungrateful <laughs> ah <laughs> no but uh, eventually I, I did in gen 6 did have friends who had internet access and other versions of the game so we could trade back and forth and eventually i caught them all from the past generations and i up until this generation i have them all because i haven't bought the dlc for gen 9 Honestly, as fun as Scarlet and Violet was, it's a huge downgrade to me as quality. It's, it's just gotten too easy. And I know I'm an adult playing a children's game, so you can you can rage against me all you want. But I, I wish they were harder. I wish there was a hard mode for the game. And that's why I kind of play ROM hacks, which is, gets me into my next question. My next question to be is, have any of us ever gotten to ROM hacks of the games? Does anyone need an explanation for that? Which would be no. Considering I do need an explanation, then okay. I'm going to say... So ROM hacks are, they've taken the files from the game. Typically, Fire Red is going to be the one that's used the most, but Black and White have been used and others have been used. And you use that system to base a new game around it. So for me, I love playing Radical Red. Radical Red is what I want Pokemon to be, is that the typings are better, the movesets are better, the games are harder, not in a like insane way of like, only the best of the best can make it, but just enough of a challenge to make it worthwhile, especially if you're nuzlocking the games. That means, you know, if your Pokemon faints, it's no longer usable. I love playing that way because it has that extra challenge and you add another challenge on top of that. So there we go. So I'm hearing no's across the board, so we won't linger there anymore. No, you we weirdo. Can... How dare yes. you play the wish.com? <laughs> <laughs> You betrayed Pokemon, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And yeah, Nintendo very much hates ROM hacks in every way, shape, or form, even though they're not making any money off of it because they know people like it and they're not willing to give them what they want, is what I'll say. Mm. So I've never really gotten into them, but we do have some. So we have an arcade that um, we have a lot of arcades at our house, but we have one that we added a bunch of, you know, games too and some of the games that are on there are some of these but i haven't gotten into them and played them my kids have though oh nice very good so going back we kind of talked a little bit about what we like about the game so what about them makes them fun to us that we keep coming back we're we're nine generations into this game we've all grown older why do we keep coming back to these children's games i think for me it's that Honestly, the formula doesn't really change, right? I love, it's the same reason that I watch The Office on repeat over and over again. It's the same reason I read Harry Potter over and over again. And it, yes. it's not because I can't take something new, but I love the familiarity of it. So when I open a new Pokemon game, I'm a kid again. Like I'm the same kid, you know, that got Pokemon for the first time, that watched Indigo League for the first time. And so there's some familiarity to it. And yet there's also always something new to catch and to look for and aspire to. So for me, I love it because I know exactly what I'm getting when I get a Pokemon game. And I will always continue to buy them. There will never be a time when I don't buy it the day it comes out. Like that's just, that's my commitment to Pokemon. Um, so, yeah. Dang. I like what I like. <laughs> and I like Pokemon. But no, it's it, it was my childhood. So, I mean, I joked about it earlier, but the reality is I did not have a happy childhood growing up. I would wake up and I, I didn't know if it was going to be, I would listen for my parents yelling to see if it was going to be a good day or a bad day um, or if it was going to be just an okay day. And so Pokemon just was a great distraction for me. And it was my therapy before I discovered, you know, actual therapy um not to like make it sound sad but it was my friend my comforter and like my escape at home and so as my freaking lore was saying like it does bring like i feel like a kid again so when i i love everything about pokemon like i love I loved watching the anime when we went to Japan like i went to the pokemon cafe and that giant pikachu coming to dance like 
I wanted to fight off this little girl who kept on getting in my shot because I was trying to film Pinky. I was like, this is my moment, you know, like there's a little 10 year old girl and I'm 31 and I'm like, no, this is my freaking moment right now. Okay. I waited 30 years for this. So it's, it's just fun. Well, minus the wanting to harm children. I, I do agree. Well, she kept on getting my... her freaking big head in my shot and you couldn't leave your seats. Sometimes you don't want to harm children. You just want to put them in their place. Yeah. You know? like, we were here first. Yeah, I actually was. I'm with you. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> and she has kids, so she knows. <laughs> but no, I totally I agree. Like that's, that's, that's that familiarity you brought up, Laura. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I reread the things that I reread. That's why we rewatch the things we rewatch, because we know what we're getting. Mm-hmm. Because they pleased us the first time around. They're things I don't rewatch because they didn't please me as much the first time around. But when I don't need to think or I just need something on the TV so I can just fall asleep. Well, yeah, there's tons of you know, different Pluto channels I can go to just watch some Star Trek or Doctor Who or what have you. It's just I've seen them before, so I don't have to pay attention and my mind can go to sleep or my mind can relax. And playing these games, my mind can relax. Look, look, I am in seminary right now. I'm taking 15 hours because I chose to do that. And that's my own fault. But I can turn on a video game or watch a a movie or something that I've already seen before because brings me comfort. And these games bring a lot of comfort because, yeah, I I know pretty much all of them by heart now. Mm -hmm. So there won't be surprises unless I encounter a shiny. But it's still fun. It's still even after all these years, I can still play Gen 1 with all its many, many flaws of how its system is based, about how the typing system works. I don't care because it's fun. Yeah. All right. Now, to go away from the games, well, a certain type of game, Laura, you mentioned earlier uh, to us that you were very big into the trading card game side of things. Mm -hmm. Can you go over what makes that so enjoyable to you? And are you still collecting? Do I still collect? I wish that I was at home so I could show you. I'm at my office, so I only have part of my Pokemon collection. My cards are a little out of hand. Um, I'm going to give you the number one reason I love the card game is ADHD dopamine boost. So every time you open a pack of cards, <laughs> it's like Christmas and a treasure hunt. And like, you don't know what you're going to get. Do I usually get like 10 of the same card over and over again? Sure. Am I a glutton for punishment and I keep buying cards? Absolutely. Um, Pokemon cards are the one thing that um, I know if I'm having a really bad week, this sounds like a drug, honestly, the way I'm going to describe this. But if I'm having a really bad week, I can stop and spend $5 on a pack of cards, get that dopamine boost, you know. But it's, I mean, it's more than that. It's, I love math and I love building things. And so the fact that I can make my team and put together cards and build decks, like for me, I realize for some people that sounds horrible, but laying out all my cards and organizing them and building a deck is like, there is nothing that will calm me down and make me feel more put together than that. So there's like systems to it too. Um, but then just also just, I think there's something so basic about collecting cards. Again, maybe it's nostalgia takes us back to being kids, you know, back when you were, you know, pogs and all that stuff that we had as kids that we just moved away from into more digital play. But Um, And it's not just Pokemon. I mean, it's Magic the Gathering and things like that, too, that I just love collecting and holding on to. It's something tangible. Um, I love teaching my kids how to play the card game. I love forcing my kids against their will to play the card game. I love forcing my husband (laughs) against his will to play the card game. And so, you know, things like that that are all about building relationships. And manipulation, it sounds like I love it. Wow. Thank you for that. Because that's one thing, like I mentioned earlier, that kind of went away from me. It was like collecting them was a lot of fun back as a kid. But having a different folders where everything was put in, its its place was nice. But also cards are expensive. And your boy got no money. So I'm not planning on restarting anytime soon. There are other things that have, you know, my wallet interested in them. So, yeah. But I I definitely get the appeal. It's like, you know, working with other people, you know, fighting them. That's what card building is all about. And um, and then also having time to spend with them, like making it a family interaction sounds like a heck of a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also have, because, you know, they have like, um, like these, like the Pokemon Academy too. I keep this in my office in case students want to learn how to play Pokemon. 
you know, I teach Old Testament and New Testament, but I lure them into my office to play Pokemon with me. So, you know, that's, I have this on hand so I can teach people how to play and enter them into a new world of Pokemon obsession. So that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Frequently the Old Testament and New Testament are the gateway drug to Pokemon (laughs) playing. It's true. Jesus told us to go out and make disciples of all the nations. And how do you do that? But catching them all. So it's Pokemon. To be fishers of men, of course. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Excellent. So you guys have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap things up today? I just wish more people had the zeal and enthusiasm to talk about Pokemon with me for an hour. So, you know, this has been therapeutic. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we could provide that. Thank you. Well, and thank you, listeners, for surviving this very chaotic episode that we that somehow managed chaotic. to make our way through it. Uh, don't you start with me. I take offense. <laughs> if uh, for our Patreon and Catholic supporters, we are going to do a special bonus question where we are going to ask the question, if we had to become a gym leader, what Pokemon type will we specialize in and why? So if that intrigues you, maybe you know, send a little money our way and you can hear our responses to that. So... Uh, does anyone have a recommendation they'd like to throw the audience's way? Go dust out your freaking Game Boy and play some Pokemon. Go be a kid again. Mm. That's my recommendation. Maybe do it outside because you need some sunlight and that really helps with mental health, actually. So, like, do that. You'll have a really good day, I promise you. Yeah. Play Pokemon Go for a walk. Go for a yeah. walk. Do yeah, that. we didn't even talk about go and sleep. <laughs> I do love Pokemon sleep. There's nothing better than waking me up in the morning to seeing which Pokemon I have. It's great. Yeah, I had to stop that. I, it was getting a little too, like, it was it was not getting restful for me. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I loved playing Go, but it also hit that part of me that I've learned I can never play gotcha games in any way, shape, or form because they appeal to that. Oh, maybe the next spin or maybe the next time I'll get it. And that's expensive and I don't have money for that. So I need to stop my gambling addiction before it gets really bad. <laughs> nah, just go get but, more money. Sell feet and uh, <laughs> Thank you, Pang. That's exactly <laughs> what I want to do as a seminary student <laughs> is advertise that I do something like that. You would. It's not illegal. It's gracious. Yeah, right. My you actual do. recommendation that has nothing to do with Pokemon is I finally watched Dial M for Murder. I'm trying to get into some old movies that I've never seen before. It is an excellent Hitchcock film uh, exploring, you know, why someone would want to do it, how to cover it up. It's really a lot of fun. So there's that. Uh, Thank you listeners for bearing with us through this episode and all the fun that we had in the midst of the chaos. Uh, Please get a chance to leave a five-star review in your podcasting uh, platform of choice. Also as well, you can reach out to us at systematicgeekology at gmail.com to send us episode topic ideas and uh, questions as well. Since you got us to over a hundred subscribers on YouTube that just ask us in general or ask a specific host, we'll get as many people as possible to answer those questions for you eventually down the road. I'd like to shout out some supporters as well. Thank you, Aaron Hart. Daniel Sigmund, Trip Fuller, and James Barrett. You guys are the best. But remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. If you'd like to support our show, please consider joining our Patreon where you get live access to our YouTube exclusives, including our comic book ketchup, manga mustard, drinks with teachers, and our companion series that we do each year with our annual theme. You can also get exclusive merch, including t-shirts, handbags, a coffee mug, and a long sleeve shirt. We also have available bonus extra questions at the end of most of our podcast episodes. You get access to exclusive Discord channels, discounts on our store, access to any future online D&D campaigns, You get to vote on topics for some of our episodes. You can easily access all of the Patreon content right through Spotify now. So super easy. Go to our Spotify page at the top. It's going to say exclusive content for subscribers. If you're a patron, hit that button. You get all of our bonus content right there on Spotify, right with your regular feed. And of course, you get the satisfaction of knowing you helped a podcast in need. Our overhead includes editing software, marketing equipment, recording software, and a lot more. And there's a lot that goes into keeping the lights on here. And we really appreciate all of our Patreon subscribers for helping the show happen. Hi, my name is TJ, and I'm here to tell you about the Amazon Ministry Podcast Network. Uh, 
We have a bunch of shows on AMP. Uh, you can follow the entire network in a single feed on Spotify at Amazon Ministry Podcasts or on the network page on Apple Podcasts. Uh, some of the ones we're running right now are the homily, uh, which is Pastor Will's homily messages from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Chapel Hill. Uh, we have the whole church podcast, which uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's where myself and Joshua, uh, we interview leaders from different denominations and backgrounds to work for a full church unity. Big C. Uh, we have My Seminary Life by Brandon Knight, former host on Systematic Ecology. He discusses his experience at seminary and discusses seminary topics so anyone can access the knowledge. Uh, which is kind of cool. It's like the book, uh, everything you learn in business school and then everything you don't learn at business school. Uh, that's great. Uh, we have Let Nothing Move You by Christian Ashley. He goes through the Bible, uh, kind of like it's a Bible study to explain the biblical narrative through his perspective and what he's learned. Uh, Dummy for Theology, which is Joshua's show. Uh, he discusses various theological topics in an attempt to show every side of big discussions. The uh, that leaves you with more questions than answers, which everyone loves a lot. Uh, it's kind of a continuation of a series that we did on Whole Church, but it's really good. It's really fun. Uh, we have the Bible After Hours, where the foul-mouthed preacher goes through the Bible from a progressive view to challenge the status quo of the modern church. I love that one. If you're from a more conservative uh, background, that one, yeah, I find, will probably be the most helpful for you. Definitely check that out. And we have the Clydes. Taylor and Elizabeth Clyde go through weekly discussions in a devotional, conversational method uh, to help us get closer to one another and God. Uh, that's just a little review of what we do in AMP and all of our other shows. Uh, so check that out. Get subscribed and just start getting all that free content, you know.